Good day everyone, bonjour tout le monde, this is Roger, and welcome to episode 15 of Brothers and Irons. Today we are on our way to Collingwood, where we're going to meet the Honorary Lieutenant General Richard Romer. Alors, euh, ça va être un épisode super intéressant, j'ai bien hâte de rencontrer ce personnage qu'on me dit qui est très coloré et euh, qui nous raconte ses, euh, ses péripéties de la Deuxième Guerre mondiale. I joined uh, the Air Force in 1942. I uh, got my wings in commission at Ilmer in uh, March of 43. I joined my squadron, 430 squadron, in, uh, in England, flying the Mustang. We were a fighter reconnaissance unit. Our job was not to shoot down uh, enemy aircraft. Our, aircraft, our job was to use our cameras and our eyes and heads to uh, do reconnaissance work directly for the uh, army. Our photographic section was large and very heavily occupied once we got to Normandy. And our job is to go across and do a reconnaissance over Caen to uh, be able to tell the Army when we got back what we saw there in terms of movements or vehicles or whatever. So we flew across. When we came to the uh, beachhead area, there was a cloud, uh, a wall, and we had to go under it in order to get to calm. And we were down to 500 feet, which is probably going to be shown in your paintings. Uh, to get through and then do the reconnaissance. We came back up the Orne and were able to see the gliders that had just landed uh, three or four hours before at uh, the big bridge. So it was quite a dynamic uh, affair. I and mean, we flew up and down the uh, Canadian British beaches at really below 500 feet. And our job was to protect against any intrusion by Luftwaffe, watching the landing craft coming in uh, some distance out, and uh, also watching the aircraft, aircraft being, our aircraft being fired at by, by uh, the anti-aircraft uh, weaponry. Uh, shells from the uh, battleships landing uh, all around us, and we couldn't see them, so when they went by, we didn't see them, that was fine. But the reality was the whole place was alive with activity in terms of we, of course, were watching to see what troops we might see or guns or whatever, or weaponry. And uh, that was our job. And suddenly I checked my petrol gauge and it said zero. I had been watching my number one. And uh, so I said, we have to return to England, which we did. And I landed at Thorny Island on the south coast, and my engine quit on the runway. So it was a marginal affair. So that was our D-Day uh, operation. So I did 135 missions. Uh, all the time being fired at by uh, anti-aircraft weaponry uh, because we were down at from 50 feet to uh, 3,000 feet. So we were a uh, favorite target for the 88 for immediate height, that 20 millimeter, 40 millimeter, and then all the other stuff we couldn't even see. But it was all the time. and. Uh, we lost a lot of people through the anti-aircraft end of things, although we didn't lose any from uh, Falk Wolf 190s or anything like that. But that was the nature of our work. We would operate in pairs or in, in sections of four, no more than that. And the job of the four or three was just to watch the and protect the tail of the leader. This is the story of a bridge in Holland over the Moss River at a town called Venlo. 
bridges here. It's a double bridge, rail and road. And uh, the Germans had it in very good shape, but the Germans in retreating were getting all kinds of equipment uh, back over the bridge. So Montgomery said uh, the bridge has to come down. The only weaponry that they had was a, an eight inch super heavy gun uh, manned by a British battery. And I was assigned out of 50 pilots, I was chosen to, because I had done a lot, to range the shooting. And so with the number two who's here in the film, uh, protecting my tail, I wanted, spent uh, an hour and a half, having made very little contact with the gun, I directed the entire firing of the gun on. And by the time I left, I had the shells landing right beside the bridge, and the gun was 14 miles away. They fired after I had gone. They had, I had ranged about 30 shells on the bridge. They fired another 16 uh, during the night. And in the morning, uh, word came that the bridge was down. And there were signals. I had a lot of research done on it. And the uh, brigadier in the area was very pleased because the bridges were down. I went to a university in Windsor, the University of Windsor, and got my BA. Then I went to law school in Toronto at Osgoode Hall, graduated in 1951. And I just retired from the practice of law a month ago. It's a long time. En terminant, j'aimerais remercier le lieutenant général Romer pour nous avoir accordé cette entrevue et pour avoir à partager avec nous aussi généreusement ses expériences de la Deuxième Guerre mondiale. I hope you have enjoyed the stories as much as I did. It was awesome. So, for Brothers in Arms, this is Roger. Till next episode, fair wind, soft landings, everyone. Airborne. <laughs>